Problem nine says, what is the absolute maximum of the function f of x equals five minus two times the absolute value of x on this closed interval? So this is a closed interval, so we can use the closed interval method. Now, once again, we have an absolute value, so we cannot proceed with this problem in this form. We need to actually rewrite this so that it's broken up into its piecewise components. So I'm going to take the function f of x, and we're going to break up the absolute value in the same way we did for absolute value of x on an earlier problem. So the first thing that we do is we take the function, and we write it exactly the way it is, and I'm replacing the absolute value bars with parentheses. So this represents the parts of the function where this quantity was already going to be positive, so it comes out exactly the same as if the absolute value bars weren't there. Then we write the equation, and we multiply this term by negative one. So this would represent the areas of the graph where this would have been negative, but the absolute value bars make it come out as positive. So this minus a minus makes this plus. Now, absolute value functions have a sharp point or cusp, and at absolute value of x, that occurs at zero. Well, the absolute value of x minus one, it's just shifted to the right one unit. So this is going to represent when the graph is greater than or equal to one, and this is gonna represent when it's less than one. So now I'm going to do a cleanup step, and I'm just gonna distribute the two, clean this up, and we get that this is negative two x plus seven, and this is positive two x plus three. Now, in order to find maxima and minima, we have to find the critical values. So in a situation like this with absolute value, the math isn't gonna like directly show you um, where the D and E's are unless you have like a working knowledge of absolute value. So it looks like we probably need to investigate one, but we actually know that what's actually happening at one is a sharp point. So we can actually state that outright. We can state that F prime does not exist at X equals one because there's a sharp point there. Now to find the other type of possible critical value, we need to actually compute the derivative. So you compute the derivative of each piece. So the derivative of the first piece is negative two, the derivative of the second piece is two, and when I pull over this domain step, I drop the underline because the derivative does not exist at one. So we, we eliminate the equal to case, right? So this is what the derivative would look like. Now, if we wanna look at are there anywhere that the derivative equals zero? And the answer is going to be none because negative two can never be zero and two can never be zero. So we only have one critical value. Now to do the closed interval method, we set up a chart or a table. You grab the endpoints of your interval. So we start at negative one. We look at any critical values that are inside our interval. One is definitely between negative one and two. So we put one on here and then we stop with the second endpoint. So all of these values get plugged into the original function. So when I plug negative one in, I have five minus two times the absolute value of negative one minus one. Now you have two options here. You can plug it into the original function or you could also plug it into the piecewise function that you've created here as well because uh, we can just look at our, our little domain here to figure out what to do with what but this works out to be one. If we plug in one, this works out to be zero, so you just get five minus zero, which is five. And if we plug in two, we get three. So remember the question was asking for absolute maximum. So we're looking for the biggest y values so there is an absolute max 
of 5 at x equals 1. Now in terms of circling the correct answer, because both 5 and 1 are answer choices, when we're talking in terms of absolute extrema, it is the y value that is actually the extrema. So we want to know, well, what, what exactly is the highest point on the graph, right? Or what exactly is the lowest point on the graph? So it's actually the y value that you're reporting back. The x value is just where it's happening, but the value itself is the y value. So that means that 5 is the correct answer.